Hey guys, Alex here. Welcome to another Office Hours. Today's question, what's the best computer for Blender? We get some version of this question all the time. And although there isn't a one size fits all solution that will be the best option for everyone, there are a few key factors you'll wanna to consider to get the most out of Blender. Keep watching. Are you looking to get started with Blender, but you're not sure if your current setup will work? Or maybe you're in the market for a new computer and you wanna be sure it can handle everything you need it to? Blender can be used to create a ton of amazing things, from conceptual modeling, to stunning photorealistic renderings, character and product designs, animation, world building, and more. With all that creative firepower, the last thing you want is a computer that's gonna slow you down. But with all the configuration options and price points out there, trying to figure out what will best fit your needs can be downright overwhelming. So today, we'll focus on the four key hardware specs that really matter when it comes to getting the most out of Blender. But before we do that, let's be clear. I could spend hours geeking out and getting super technical about what the various hardware components do and how they each affect Blender's performance, but I'll try to spare you most of that in this video. I will, however, need to throw out some tech jargon here and there. Just keep in mind that this is meant to be a high-level overview to help you hone in on the specific things you'll want to consider and not a lesson on computer components. All right, let's jump right into the four key factors you'll need to consider. CPU, RAM, GPU, and VRAM. Of course, you're also gonna have a few decisions like laptop, desktop, screen size, resolution, storage, things that are really dependent on your preferences and work situation. We won't get into any of that stuff today. For the purposes of this video, these are the four factors we'll focus on. All right, the first thing to do is head over to the Blender website and check out what they list as the minimum requirements to run the current version of Blender. That means making sure your CPU speed and RAM are equal to or greater than the numbers listed there. For the GPU and VRAM, you might not be able to tell based on the model number, but if your computer was made in the last five years, chances are it should be good enough. Now, a word of warning, just clocking in at the minimum requirements is gonna be a recipe for frustration. Sure, you'll technically be able to run Blender, but some of the features could run painfully slow at times. So how do you avoid that? Well, Blender's website also lists out their recommended hardware specs, not just the minimum requirements. And these are gonna be a really good starting point for figuring out the best computer for you. But you're probably already thinking, okay, Alex, that's all well and good, but which of these specs are really the important ones? You know, the ones where I can get the most bang for my buck if I'm upgrading? In order to answer that question, let's dig a little deeper into each of these four key factors, starting with CPU. The CPU is where most of the hard work of the operating system and applications running on your computer happens. With CPUs, you'll notice there's the speed or clock rate, but also the number of cores. For Blender, there are some tasks that are single-threaded, meaning that they only take advantage of one core, including general 3D modeling and calculating geometric data for animations. For those tasks, it won't matter if you've got one or two or 10 or even 100 cores. The only thing that matters is the speed of the CPU. However, Blender also has many features that are multi-threaded, meaning that they do take advantage of multiple cores. This includes sculpting, simulations, and some aspects of rendering. And in those cases, more cores is better. Because most users will hop between tasks that are single and multi-threaded, the goal is to strike the perfect balance between speed and number of cores. But how do you compare CPUs with different speeds and number of cores? A handy rule of thumb is to multiply the speed by the number of cores for each machine you're comparing, and then compare those numbers. While there are instances where this won't be a perfect comparison, it does provide a pretty good idea of which option will give you the most power for your investment. All right, the next component you'll want to consider in conjunction with your CPU is RAM. RAM is your computer's short-term memory. So think of it like, as your CPU is doing complex tasks, it needs to remember a bunch of stuff in order to carry out those tasks smoothly. That's where it's using RAM. Obviously, the faster the CPU and the more RAM you have, the better. Just know that the performance boost as you upgrade is incremental, not linear. Meaning Blender won't necessarily run twice as fast with twice the CPU speed in RAM. But for complex models with high polygon counts and high resolution materials, upgrading these will definitely make a noticeable difference. All right, now you know about CPU and RAM. The next two components actually work together hand in hand, GPU and VRAM. The GPU is responsible for displaying graphics smoothly on screen, as well as being able to accelerate rendering. We'll talk more about what that means in just a bit. And your GPU works together with your VRAM. Just like the CPU has its buddy RAM to remember things, the GPU has video RAM, or VRAM, which keeps tabs on anything the GPU needs to remember. So what did I mean by the GPU being able to accelerate rendering? 
Well, while they're less important to Blender performance, your GPU and VRAM can make a big difference when it comes to rendering images and animations. And I mean big. With the right GPU and VRAM setup, you can increase render speeds by 10x or more. Meaning a one hour rendering on one machine might only take five minutes or less on another with the right GPU setup. Now, one major caveat. If you're a Mac user, you won't be able to take advantage of this GPU performance gain. No! Mac rendering relies on just the CPU. To get that speed boost, you need a PC with an NVIDIA GPU, and Macs don't support NVIDIA graphics cards. Okay, you're no doubt wondering what combination of CPU, RAM, GPU, and VRAM is best. Well, there's no cut and dry answer, but a good resource to check out for comparing rendering speeds is Blender Benchmark. They compare performance across thousands of rendering tests from computers with various CPU and GPU configurations. I also put together some notes for you to help you review everything we're covering in this video. And I've included instructions on how to use Blender benchmark data to help you choose the right hardware. Plus I've added a couple of additional resources in there that compare relative CPU and GPU performance along with price. I've added a link to those notes in the description. And what do I personally recommend as the best computer for Blender? Well, if you're a Mac person and you're not gonna be swayed in that PC camp, and I get that, I say minimum, you're gonna to wanna to get a MacBook Pro with at least eight cores. If you can step up to a system with more cores, that's great. Of course, there's also the Mac Pro, which for the price of a small island, you can max out with 28 cores. If you're getting a PC, you'll want a CPU with at least six cores, preferably more, and with speeds of over three gigahertz. If you can afford faster or more cores, go for it. For your RAM on either a PC or a Mac, I recommend at least 32 gigabytes and 64 if possible. And like I said, if you're able to go faster or add more RAM, if not, anywhere between that and Blender's recommended specs should do the trick. Lastly, when it comes to GPU and VRAM, if you're on a PC laptop, I'd look for something with a good NVIDIA graphics card, like the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series, or if you can afford it, the RTX 40 series. And if you're building a PC desktop computer, consider two or more NVIDIA RTX GPUs for a real boost in rendering speed. I've added some additional resources for specking out your PC in the notes for this video. Now, one quick caveat, and I actually ran into this issue myself when I first upgraded on the PC side you're not gonna realize that full 10X boost in rendering times unless you're running multiple GPUs and those GPUs are more powerful than your CPU. Meaning a powerful GPU will give the most significant boost to a slower CPU with fewer cores. But if you've got really great CPU specs, you're gonna need two or more great GPUs to see those two to 10X gains. Again, if you're on a Mac, you won't see speed gains in rendering from a better GPU, but the graphics cards in the MacBook Pro will work fine for general Blender performance. All right, hopefully now you've got a better idea of the type of computer that will fit your Blender needs. Let me know what kind you're going with and why in the comments below. Or if you need a little more help picking the right computer for your particular situation, head over to our website and send us a message and we'd be happy to help you decide. Got a Blender question you'd like us to answer in a future office hours? Send us a message or leave it in the comments below. And as the mega YouTube influencer cool kids say, what, what's that they say? Smash that like button and subscribe right now. Until next time, happy blending.